This is the question from May June 2016, question 1. The diagram shows a blast furnace. A blast furnace is used for extracting iron from its ore, or in another word, we call them as hematite. So what happens in your blast furnace is three raw materials are being inserted into your blast furnace and you have got outlet with waste gases coming out outlet for your product coming out there's also another inlet over here that we will go through in a while so question a says that the following equations represent reactions which take place in the blast furnace so there are five reactions that are happening over here if you refer to the notes that i have uploaded you would see that i have listed down the process of extraction the first thing that happens is the carbon is oxidized into carbon dioxide. Next thing, the carbon dioxide that is being produced will rise on top of your blast furnace and start reacting with more carbon that is inserted as a raw material. What happens is that it will reduce to carbon monoxide. Now your carbon monoxide will react with your hematite. Now hematite here is the ore. You'll be able to get iron out of here and also carbon dioxide again. Now, another raw material that's being added into your blast furnace is a limestone. So what happens with limestone is that it undergoes thermal decomposition. It breaks down to form calcium oxide and again carbon dioxide. Now this calcium oxide is used to react with your impurities in order to form slag. So back to our question, the first part is asking you which reaction is used to increase the temperature inside the blast furnace. Now, if they mention over here to increase the temperature, that means that this process is extremely exothermic. An exothermic process is a burning process. As we saw in our notes, carbon is oxidized to form carbon dioxide in a combustion process. So your answer for the first part would be A. Question 2, which reaction is an example of thermal decomposition? Now, thermal decomposition was the breaking down of calcium carbonate. So, as you can see here, this is calcium carbonate becoming calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. So, the answer would be B. Part 3. In which reaction is carbon both oxidized and reduced? This means they want you to determine which reaction is a redox reaction. A redox reaction is when both oxidation and reduction take place at the same time. So, if you can see at our reaction D, Carbon dioxide goes through reduction as it loses oxygen and carbon undergoes oxygen as it gains oxygen. So this is a redox reaction. Part 4, which equation shows the removal of an impurity from the iron? Now after thermal decomposition, you will get calcium oxide and calcium oxide will help you to remove an impurity called silicon oxide. So reaction C would be the answer for this part. The last one, which equation shows the reaction of an acidic substance with a basic substance? So the last part of this would be your reaction E. Next question, use the diagram of the blast furnace to help you answer this question. What enters at the blast furnace X? If you refer to the notes that I have uploaded, you will see that I have labeled over here, what enters into your blast furnace is a hot air. Question two, what leaves at the blast furnace at Y? So at the bottom of this blast furnace, you will get molten iron, the one that you wanted to extract. And your molten iron is what will be coming out of your blast furnace. This is the continuation of the same question. Name two waste gases that leave the blast furnace. Now, the waste gases that leaves out of the blast furnace would be carbon dioxide and nitrogen gas. Question C. The graph shows how the malleability of iron changes as the percentage of carbon in the iron changes. So malleability means the ability of a metal to be distorted or change shape easily. So if you look at the graph shown, as the percentage of your carbon increases, the malleability decreases. This means that at this point, when your malleability decreases, your metal tend to become brittle. Brittle meaning that it is easily breakable and we do not want that. We need our metal to have a very high malleability so that it would be easier for us to shape it instead of bending it and having it break easily. So in order for us to have a good or a malleable iron, it is better to have a low percentage of carbon instead of a high percentage of carbon. 
As the percentage of carbon increases, the malleability of iron decreases. Next part, iron obtained from the blast furnace contain high levels of carbon. Explain how the amount of carbon in the iron can be. Since carbon is very reactive with oxygen, what you could do is blow in oxygen gas so that carbon would react with oxygen to form carbon dioxide. And then this carbon dioxide could easily removed from the blast furnace as your waste gases. If the carbon is reacting with oxygen to form your carbon dioxide gas, you can reduce the number of carbon inside your blast furnace. So this is the question from May, June 2018, question 3. This question is about iron. Three of the raw materials is added to a blast furnace used to extract iron from hematite ore. Those three are coke, hematite and limestone. They want you to name another raw material added to the blast furnace. So the other raw material added as we have discussed before would be hot air. Question B. A series of reactions occur in a blast furnace during the extraction of iron from hematite. Describe this reaction. Include one chemical equation for the reduction of hematite and one chemical equation for the formation of slag. So when they ask you to describe the extraction of iron from hematite, all you have to do is list down these five reactions that takes place inside of your blast furnace. So I would suggest you to please memorize this tab in order for you to answer questions questions like this as this is a famous question that comes out in your IGCSC. So these are the five steps as the notes have listed. Question C. The iron extracted from hematite using a blast furnace is impure, meaning that it contains impurities. Identify the main impurity in this iron and explain how it is removed in the steel making process. So similar with the previous question that we did, the main impurity would be carbon and how you could remove it is to blow into or pass oxygen gas so that it would react with your carbon to form carbon dioxide and then you could remove the carbon dioxide as a waste gas out of the blast furnace this is the specimen paper of 2020 question 5 as you can see the question is being repeated iron is extracted from its ore hematite and they're asking you to describe the reaction involved in this extraction include one equation for the redox reaction and one for acid base reaction Again, this question gives you five marks. All you have to do is list down the same five steps that we have discussed previously. So this would be the five steps. Please memorize this accordingly. This is the question from February, March 2017. It is a combination of the extraction of iron and the extraction of zinc. So let's do the first part. It says that iron is extracted from its ore using a blast furnace. In the blast furnace, coke burns in oxygen to produce heat energy and carbon dioxide. How is the carbon dioxide then converted into carbon monoxide? They're asking you to state this reaction. Your carbon dioxide will react with coke. Question B. Calcium carbonate added to the blast furnace decomposes to form calcium oxide. Calcium oxide then removes silicon oxide from the iron in a neutralization reaction. Write a chemical equation for this reaction of calcium oxide with silicon oxide. They're also asking you to suggest why this is a neutralization reaction. So first let's list down their equation. Now neutralization is a reaction between acid and base. So from this reaction, your calcium oxide would be the base and your silicon oxide reacts as an acid over here. So since you have your base and acid reacting together, this is the reason why this reaction is called as neutralization. Part C, the main impurity in iron obtained from the blast furnace is carbon. Why must the high levels of carbon be lowered before the iron becomes a useful material? Now, if you still remember the previous question that we did, the one with the graph of malleability and the percentage of carbon, this one, so as you can see, if the percentage of carbon increases, your metal would become brittle, which is breakable, and that is not good. So the reason why we should lower down our percentage of carbon is to make sure that our metal do not become brittle. How is the carbon removed from the iron? So by now you already know, in order for us to remove carbon, we will blow in oxygen so that it can react with each other to form carbon dioxide. Since the question is only giving you one mark, if you say reacted with oxygen, it is sufficient enough. If they give you two mark, then you can mention that it will become carbon dioxide. And if they ask you how to remove it, 
then you can carbon dioxide will escape as a waste gas now the second part of this question is about the extraction of zinc from its ore the ore contains zinc sulfide the zinc sulfide is roasted in air roasted in air means it reacts with oxygen to produce zinc oxide and sulfur dioxide zinc is then obtained from the zinc oxide using a blast furnace so you are obtaining zinc over here give the name of the ore of zinc that contains zinc sulfide this one so if you refer to the notes i have also covered the extraction of zinc you will see zinc blend over here. zinc blend is the ore which contains mainly zinc sulfide so this is the answer for your question next write a chemical equation for the reaction that takes place when zinc sulfide is roasted in air so same thing you can refer to the notes says that zinc sulfide is roasted in air to form zinc oxide and silicon dioxide last question suggest why the sulfur dioxide should not be released into atmosphere now sulfur dioxide is an acidic gas and this is considered to be a pollutant sulfur dioxide will react with rainwater to produce acid rain and acid rain could cause breathing difficulties or aquatic animals to die now the next question is the continuation of the same question it says that the temperature inside the blast furnace in which zinc is extracted is about 1000 degrees celsius so this is your optimum temperature the table gives some information about substances in the blast furnace in which zinc is extracted so as you can see here the carbon sublimes at 4330 degrees celsius sublimes meaning that it will convert from solid into gas at this particular temperature next silicon oxide melts at 1610 melt degrees celsius and a boiling point where it converts into gas at 2230 degrees celsius as you can see zinc melts at a pretty low temperature of 420 and it converts into gas at a temperature of 907 degrees celsius so the question is asking you using this data in the table explain why zinc obtained does not contain high levels of impurities like silicon oxide and carbon so as you can see here it has already been mentioned the operating temperature inside your furnace is 1000 degrees celsius meaning that carbon and silicon dioxide which has a boiling point of 4000 and 2000 will not be able to boil as this temperature does not reach their boiling point However, zinc is 970 degrees Celsius, so at 1000 degrees Celsius, it has already boiled. So you could just say that zinc boils because it has a boiling point lower than 1000 degrees Celsius. So it will not contain any impurities as much as silicon oxide or carbon that is stayed inside of your blast furnace despite the operating condition. This is another question about zinc extraction from May June 2016. Question 6. Zinc is extracted from an ore. Now you know that the ore is called zinc blend. It consists mainly of zinc sulfide. Question A, part 1. The zinc sulfide in the ore is first converted into zinc oxide. Describe how zinc oxide is made from zinc sulfide. So since they're asking you how, you need to explain that at first it will be roasted in the air. The second part, write a chemical equation for this reaction. So this time you need to state the chemical equation that happens in this reaction. So I hope by now you are able to grasp the pattern of this chapter. As you can see, if they ask you the extraction of zinc or even iron, the pattern of the question is always the same and it is very important for you to always remember the chemical equation for each of these reactions. Part B, zinc oxide is converted into zinc. Zinc oxide and coke are fed into the furnace. Hot air is blown into the bottom of the furnace. Zinc has a melting point of 420 degrees Celsius and boiling point of 907 degrees Celsius. The temperature inside the furnace is over 1000 degrees Celsius. This is similar with the question that we did before. Explain how zinc oxide is converted into zinc. Your answer should include details of how the heat is produced and equations for all the reactions you describe. So similar with the one that we did like iron extraction, 
the first two steps would be that the carbon is roasted in the air and then the carbon dioxide is reduced to become carbon monoxide so now your zinc oxide will be reduced by carbon monoxide to get zinc so please remember these three steps in order to answer this type of question second part explain why the zinc produced inside the furnace is a gas now the operating temperature inside of your furnace is 100 degrees celsius and it has already been mentioned here that the boiling point is 907 this means that above this temperature the state of matter for your zinc has been converted to become a gas so the temperature inside the furnace is above 907 degrees celsius and the zinc has converted into gas last question state the name of the physical change for conversion of gas into molten now molten meaning liquid if you turn gas into liquid the process is called as condensation 